Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. Uh, today we are going to be talking about my top five favorite tomes, books that are at least over 700 pages. I was going to try and make a, uh, a list of books over a thousand pages that I enjoyed, but I couldn't find five of them. Um, in fact, there are quite a few over a thousand pages that I read that I didn't like, so I might actually do a top five tomes that I didn't enjoy that I actually finished. If you guys are interested in that, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, one of these books I'm not going to go into very much because I have not shot the review of it. I can't quite wrap my brain around the reasoning why I liked it so much, and I'm not going to review the book until that point. So when we get to it, we will talk about it then. But number five on the list is The Terror by Dan Simmons. Uh, this is also one of my top five favorite horror novels not written by Stephen King. It's much more than a horror novel. I don't, I don't think it, it might be possible to write a novel that is scary, you know, for 700 pages. I doubt that. I mean, even Stephen King's It, it, the, the entire book isn't scary. There's slice of life moments in there. There's drama. There's character development. All that stuff. And it's the same way with this one. Oh, by the way, there's no Stephen King on this list. I wanted to make it because if I did Stephen King, it, at least two or three of the positions would be taken over by Stephen King books. But uh, anyways, The Terror is a fantastic story of the failed uh, Franklin expedition that got stuck in the ice and everybody ended up disappearing or dying. Um, I can't remember which, it, I can't remember the truth of the story, but the fictionalized version is they're basically attacked by a monster. Um, and it was a fantastic novel from the beginning to end. It is the quickest I have ever read a novel of this length. And that's why it's on the list. Everything else that on here, I did like a chapter to two chapters a day. This one I just devoured in the course of a, a, a couple days. I couldn't put it down. Now the paperback version of this Joker is 960 pages. I'm not sure how many it is, it is in hardcover, but this is a very... Uh, it's your typical uh, paperback. It's not large font, so I'm, I'm not thinking there's a huge discrepancy. Probably should have looked it up before I filmed this. But um, anyways, so yeah, this is number five, The Terror by Dan Simmons. Next up on the list is one that every time I bring it up, I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, because every time I bring it up, people get pissy in the comments, and I just don't want to go through that junk um, right now. So it's Gone with the Wind. Um, I appreciated every page of this book. I read it um, two chapters a day. I believe it's 60 chapters. Um, I had two chapters a day for Christmas of the, well, not Christmas, but December of the year that I read it. Um, in fact, I liked it so much, I decided to try and dedicate the next year of my reading schedule to only books that were, o o you know, over 700 pages, roughly. Uh, I ended up failing miserably because I ended up quitting, I think, three of the books that I tried to read, and I only finished one, and then I just gave up on the, the, the challenge. It's one of the only challenges, reading challenges I've failed, though, other than and the, me trying to read all of John Irving's books in one year. But yeah, Gone with the Wind, um, I love it for its accurate portrayal of the South. There are scenes in here, uh, like the weather. I heard, I, I read somewhere that Margaret Mitchell actually used a uh, an almanac or whatever it is that you can find out what the weather was like on that day, you know, when um, in history, and that she actually used the accurate weather in that area on that certain day. I, that blew my mind to go through that much detail because it's not like she had Google to work with. Alright, at number three we have Haruki Mirakami's 1Q84. This is a big old chunk of a book. I think it's 1100 pages. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, it's almost 1,200 pages. Now, with, with this one, I, I like this one because I have absolutely, I, I have no idea why I like it so much. Um, I read it two chapters a day, just like I did with Gone with the Wind. I tend to do that with the bigger books. Um, anything over 700 pages, unless it's like The Terror where I just can't stop reading, or a Stephen King novel, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna blow right through it because I know that he's got something coming for me. It's that dependability. Uh, with Haruki Mitakami, I, I have the same dependability, but only because I read this book. 
Um, I read After Dark and I loved it and I jumped right into this one. I didn't read any of his other stuff. So I went from his shortest book. Well, I, I think The Secret Library is longer. But I went from one of his shortest books to his longest book. Uh, this is a fascinating story, magical realism. Um, there's so so much subtext and so much amazing writing. Now, this is this is of course translated. It, is, it isn't the original uh, the the original Japanese, of course. But uh, I think it's Philip Gabriel. I can't remember who. Uh, no, J J Rubin and Philip Gabriel. Philip Gabriel, I think, is my favorite of his uh, translators. J Rubin would be second. But um. He's had some bad, some really bad translated novels. Uh, but this one, I remember certain aspects so vividly, uh, like the little people, that none of this, none of the stuff that I really, really liked was the point of the book. Um, and that's what kind of blew me away. I'm not exactly sure why it was so easy to read. Um, but I never, it, when, the, when I knew that the next day was coming and I had to read my two chapters, I would knock them out that morning just to get them out. I was also reading, you know, probably the only reason I didn't devour this one like I did the terror is because I had other books going on while I was reading this one, and that's how I like to read my the longer fiction that I go through. With this one, I had several books going at the same time. In fact, I believe I was reading choreography, or listening to it, um, the Corey Feldman biography. I was, I believe I was listening to that one, and I actually got some stuff confused with what happened in this book with the Corey Feldman one. Um, luckily that didn't get, end up in my review like it, like it tends to, but that's one of the, I think that's one of the problems, one of the only problems I run into when I read multiple books at one time is sometimes I get confused in which things happen in which, um, but, uh, yeah, with this one, it, if I wasn't, if I hadn't been reading so many other books while I was reading this one, I probably would have read this one in about a week or two. Um, but the way it was, I ended up reading it, I don't know, probably over a month, month and a half, roughly. Okay, uh, next up, we are going into the one that I'm not going to talk too much about, um, and it is Donna Tartt's The Goldfinch. I absolutely adored this book. Uh, I have reasons for it, but I'm not entirely sure why I loved it as much as I did. Ash, hush! My dog is ha my dog is having a fit. Anyways, um, but yeah, this this book went by. It didn't go by quickly, but it felt like it was quick. Even though it took me, I know it took me well over a month. It probably took me. It took me most of the summer to read it. I started it. I believe I started it back in June. I can't actually remember. But I blew through the last hundred pages. Um, sorry, Pierce, that I left you in in, in my dust. But I blew through the last hundred pages. It was just a, such an amazing wrap-up to the story. But that's all I'm going to say because I still have to review this. Um, I will go into more detail in my review. Last, and at the number one spot, yes, these are numbered. These are the in, a, in, a, in ascending order from five to one. This is my number one favorite tome that's not written by Stephen King. Because let's be honest, if, if I'm going to talk about Stephen King, The Stand and It are going to be on here. And probably, uh, I don't know, is Do how long is Duma Key? I know, no, Duma Key is a big old chunk of a book. And there's just so many great Stephen King books that are over 700 pages long. But, at number one, it's not Stephen King. It is Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. I was talking to a shell, my wife, the other day, who I read, I'm going to put that down because, you know, it's a heavy book, um, who I read this to. Um, we do... At, at, at night when when she's not working on schoolwork, I read to her. Um, it's just something, you know, it's not really a bonding experience, it's just something we like to do together, like playing video games, watching movies, that kind of thing. Um, with this one, we read it over the course, I think it was about nine months. Uh, it's a very, very long time. And I asked her the other day, I was like, do you ever think about this book? And she says, yeah, al almost every single day. And I'm the same way. I think about Infinite Jest scenes, it's not always the same scene, of course, and it is, uh, with the end notes included, it is, let's see how many pages it is, 1,077 pages. None of the other books on this list have stayed with me. Uh, we'll see about the Goldfinch, but none of these books do I think about every single day. Um, I think of a lot of short works all the time, but Infinite Jest, almost every single day I see something in life that harkens back to Infinite Jest, and that just blows my mind. He wrote the book with the intention of making it an addictive, uh, an addictive experience, because the book is 
a lot there a lot of the book has to do with addiction in fact I I'd probably say the entire book is about addiction um, he had his own problems with addiction I believe his was alcohol um, unfortunately he ended up uh, killing himself at, and he's no longer with us it, it's, it's been a while but uh, he didn't finish his last book I think it was the pale king was left unfinished even though it is published now uh, it's kind of like uh, sh not Shakespeare Dickens drew uh, the whatever of Edwin Drood or whatever it's one of the stories that he left unfinished but every single day I think about this book I think of some aspect of it and I think one of the re well one of the reasons why I liked it so much is because it is about addiction I fought with addiction almost my entire life um, whether it be food drugs cigarettes alcohol a any of those things I've fought with addiction at some point in my life because even when I was a kid I was addicted to eating all I wanted to do was eat 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 and made me happy um, so with this one, I, I'm not exactly sure why Shell likes it as much as she does. I haven't gone into that. That might be a discussion for another time with just me and her. But uh, we also did a review. Uh, we wanted to start a series called The Smartening, and then she got too busy. It's another reason why we haven't been doing these nasties, that kind of thing. Um, she's been so busy with school. We have a teenager now, and we homeschool our kids. So if if you can imagine trying to homeschool a teenager with all the stuff that they have to do to get ready for college, that's what she's going through right now. Um, but anyways, that's my top five books over, uh, I would say, over 800 pages? Uh, no, no, the, 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 uh, the Goldfinch is 771 pages. So let's say over 700 pages. So that's the question for the day. What are some of your favorite books over 700 pages? Leave all those things down there in the doobly-doo. If you have a video like this, please link me to it. If it doesn't show up right away, I will go into the spam filter at some point during the week and make sure that it shows up. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!